This evening we have the pleasure of welcoming Father Raju from the Archdiocese of Trivandrum, which is in the southern part of India. So during the homily, he's going to be sharing with us some of the good work that he and his fellow priests in the diocese there are doing amongst the people. So welcome, Father Raju. It's good to have you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord, our God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayers, and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water, the prophets proclaim the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom through Christ our Lord.
let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made to known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why, do you, why are you troubled? And why do you questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning here from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you.
Good evening to you. It's a wonderful season of Easter, Easter and blessing to you all. And here I come to make an appeal of sharing the struggles of our people. I thank our pastor, Father Matthew, and our deacon for inviting me to our midst. Why am I here today? After my ordination, I was assigned to a fishing village which had two churches with 3,000 families. One day, a young widow named Dibina approached me with her two daughters crying. She had just lost her husband while going for fishing. This happened uh, during monsoon. The sea was so rough and dangerous, despite the warning further from the weather caster, he was forced to go for fishing by the hungry faces of his children. The family lost the only breadwinner in the sea waves. Unable to assist them financially, I wrote to a priest friend then working in Michigan. He sent me $200. The letter followed, he said, $50 was the gift of two schoolboys who saved that money for the missions by selling newspapers. This kind of accidents and requests are ordinary in my diocese. However, today, the kind of request is multiplied amid the, the aftermath of the pandemic which all of us can relate to. Our families, parishes, the diocese were adversely affected economically. People struggled to put food on the table. Unlike your rich and blessed country, no incentive checks, no unemployment benefits, no assistance from the government except a bi-weekly ration of 10 pounds of rice given to an individual under poverty line. For a few months, uh, the diocese distributed raw food kits uh, with the vegetables, oils, and sugar to needy parishioners. This afternoon, I stand before you primarily to express our heartfelt gratitude for the outpouring of love and compassion you always show toward our people. You showed it at the time of tsunami, 2004 tsunami, to assist our fishermen. You show it year after year in supporting various missionary groups. Your sacrifices mean so much to us, and we are deeply grateful to you, to your families, to a bishop, to the director of the publication of faith, in particular, your young and vibrant pastor, Father Matthew, for giving me this opportunity to address you. The Archdiocese of Trivandrum, situated in the southern tip of India, in Kerala state, uh, associate pastor is also from Kerala. He's from North Kerala and from the South Kerala. Has about 270,000 Catholics. 90% of our people are by occupation ill-equipped traditional fishermen. 10% are farm workers. Our ancestors were converted to Christianity by the toils and prayers of Saint Francis Xavier, 450 years ago at a time when the caste system was prevalent. And our people were denied of religious worship. At this time of caste discrimination, the Christian understanding of God, religious freedom and equality preached by Saint Francis Xavier appealed it to my people, so much so the entire villages accepted Christian faith. A majority of our fishermen lives in small 
clustered thatched huts and homes along the coastal belt of Arabian Sea in an atmosphere of malnutrition and nourishment. Uh, these villages are densely populated. For example, in a one square mile area, more than 3,000 families live, not by choice, but by destiny, due to lack, lack of land. Their main means of livelihood is fishing. Economically poor, many fishermen cannot afford to have a mechanized boat. So six nights in a week, these fishermen go deep into the Arabian Sea in primitive sailboats regardless of thunder, rain, and lightning. Whether they get fish or not, spend the whole night in the sea, come back to the shore next day morning. Then their wives and grown-up daughters carry the fish to market for sale. Fishing is seasonal only for seven months. Lack of resources and the scarcity of alternative employments make their lives miserable. Many days, the children go to bed hungry. Added to that, during monsoon, torrential rain washes away many homes from the shore. In times of natural calamities, they are at the mercy of the state and religious organizations for food and shelter. Amidst the fear, uncertainty, and death generated by the pandemic, several families lost their homes to Hurricane Pocate that swept through the coast in May 2021, leaving 329 houses fully and 800 partially destroyed. Sadly, the victims are still sheltered in public school buildings. The houses here are not insured. Then the return of several young men who were employed in Gulf countries, in mainly in construction and service industries due to layoff and COVID-19 added to their misery. They are yet to find work at home. Besides uh, the unscientific construction of a commercial harbor for container ships in the fishing harbor has been causing tremendous sea erosion and destru destruction of several homes. Anti-Christian and the pro-corporate approach of the government is adversely affecting our communities and the diocese as it stands by the cause of fishermen. Now the diocese is forced to, to halt several humanitarian projects such as Save a Family and Women Empowerment Schemes financed by foreign organizations due to newly government-imposed restrictions. So with no steady income, either from fishing or from the Middle East, our families struggle to support themselves. Our churches are stressed to, to support the most vulnerable, the elderly, the orphans, their priests, catechists, and the seminarians. 140 seminarians are in training, so much occasions. And uh, to finance uh, Boys Town School for the orphans, Mercy Home for unwed mothers and babies, is a struggle. Yet amid these challenges, the faith of the people remain intact. At the normal times, 90% of our people attend Sunday Masses. In our missionary journey, when we find our path thorny, our future gloomy, 
When our lives are tossed about by the storms of the pandemic, fear and uncertainty, and when widows come and knock at our doors with their kids for a pair of clothes, or a few grains of rice to feed them in their hunger, though helpless, we stay with our people. We struggle with our people, strengthen their faith, and lead in them to Jesus, who tells us, as we heard it today, calmly, peace be with you. Fear not, I am with you, it is I. Whatever your worries and struggles, not be discouraged. O oh, you of little faith, this too will pass. I have conquered them all. Joining the terrified disciples in the upper room, he sees their loveliness, their loveliness before he sees their brokenness. He heals them and gives them new life, new start. After encountering the post-resurrection Jesus, the disciples were different people. And Jesus invites each one of us to celebrate our own brokenness and loveliness. He can repair and make us even more beautiful. It is very challenging to accept and grasp this invitation and remain at peace and hope filled when our people are constantly tested and see no long-term relief. Yet the, scripture, yet the scripture tells us this is possible when we remain in the spirit of the risen Lord as his witnesses showing love and compassion to each other as he did. Moreover, our faith and hope in you, that we are not alone in this journey. Your love, your smile, your kindness, your support keeps us joy-filled. You give us hope to persevere and to carry on. Jesus' mission. At times, I wonder if you stop helping the missions, how would they survive? So may I request that you make one-time sacrifice according to your means, maybe one meal of your family. $50 will pay one month food for a family of four people, $600 for one whole year. A one month food and large expense of an orphan studying in our special school. $100 will pay one month expense of a seminarian. Whatever you could do would be a great blessing as God has blessed your nation, your families in a tremendous way, for which we are very, very grateful to God. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your prayers. In return, we have nothing to offer you materially. You accept our continued prayers and gratitude and the gospel promise you are fortunate because the poor cannot repay you, but the repayment will be made when the virtuous rise again. Thank you. As our pastor mentioned, uh, there's a collection box in the lobby. Whatever you could uh, offer would be a great blessing. If you're not uh, prepared today, you may bring back your contribution and drop it in the box. And if you are going to write a check, please do so to St. Paul Parish under the memo. Please write for the missions. Thank you.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the power of the risen Christ, let us bring our needs to God today. For church leaders, <clears throat> may the Lord guide them in caring for the physical and spiritual needs of those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> for civic leaders, may the Lord grant them fortitude in defending the dignity and sanctity of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who are struggling in their faith, may they be strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> For all gathered here today, may the Holy Spirit open our hearts to generously assist in meeting the needs of the universal church in the care of their communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For peace to descend upon all nations experiencing war and conflict of any kind, and for the protection of the innocent in harm's way. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety and protection of all who protect and serve, both nationally and locally, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they rest in eternal peace with the Father and with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those whom we remember in today's Mass, for Audrey McGill, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the cares and concerns that we carry in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. God of hope, receive these prayers we offer you today. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make up as an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance which you have elected, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm the faith and charity we have been to church on earth as we have celebrated the Francis of the Pope, John of the Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for the world. Listen to At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. This weekend we do have an opportunity to help those both near and far. As Father mentioned, uh, we do have collection boxes both at the entrance and at the two side exits. So if you're able to help with the mission work that is going on in India with people that are so destitute, I uh, certainly would welcome your generosity just to put food in their bellies. We also have our quarterly collection for our own food pantry here. So also, if you are feeling especially generous to grab a paper brown, bra paper brown bag on your way out, there's a list of those needs that the pantry uh, could use presently. So thank you for your generosity, knowing that even a little bit goes a very long way. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing, and please respond amen to the following prayers. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The St. Paul Parish Prayer. Lord, St. Paul's is composed of people like me. It is I who help make it what it is. It will be friendly if I am. It will be holy if I am. Its pews will be filled if I help fill them. It will do great work if I work. It will be prayerful if I pray. It will be generous for good causes if I am a generous giver. It will bring people together to worship and fellowship if I invite and bring them. It will be a parish of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and faith if I am filled with these same qualities in myself. Therefore, Lord, give me the grace to dedicate myself to being everything I want St. Paul Catholic Church, my parish, to be. Amen. Amen.